Hey there everybody, it's Karen and what's up? So I'm going to have another Copic Marker Speed Paint for you today and I hope that you're really excited about it. I know that I am. And uh, I was wondering if you guys think I should change my intro because it's kind of long and repetitive. And uh... What is going on? A wild Pokemon double Copic Marker Speed Paint blah blah blah. Okay, yeah, that was weird. Um, this drawing is huge. Uh, not nearly as big as the last drawing that I had for you guys to look at, um, in terms of the amount of characters. Um, this is another Copic uh, commission I did for Twig Crescent, and I really loved working on this one because it was Pokemon, and um, I don't really get to do a lot of Pokemon battles anymore. I haven't really had a lot of commissions in general lately, and I was just, I'm really glad that... Um, I got to work on this one. I did this way back in April and May. Um, basically all I'm doing right now is sketching and I'm not copying the sprites or whatever, the official artwork. Um, I'm basically just using them as reference because I don't really, I never had an Agron in my game. Uh, so I needed to look at a reference so I knew what it looked like. And the same with um, Gardevoir because I really don't, I mean, I had a Gardevoir, but I didn't know what they looked like from the behind. Because <laughs> I haven't played that game in a while. Um, but these, yes, I know this is kind of an, an, an inaccurate picture. Um, because the kid, the hero kid, isn't wearing the hero outfit. Oh, look at my painting. Um, and the kid he's battling is wearing a Team Rocket outfit, but Team Rocket wasn't in Hoenn. It was Team Magma or Team Plasma, depending on the game that you played. Um, but, you know, this is really, I mean, it's a commission for um, Twig Crescent, and his cousin is, I guess, the hero character. My ocarinas that I made. Wow, I forgot to cut that out. I forget to cut out a lot of stuff, but uh, I guess it's really not that important anyways. Um, anyway, uh, he wanted him to be... He wanted his cousin to be the hero character, and he wanted himself to be dressed in Team Rocket's outfits, and I just do whatever the commissioner tells me to do. Um, and I like the idea of doing a Team Rocket outfit because I really love the characters Jesse and James from the um, anime Pokemon cards. I think I was showing people what kind of Pokemon cards I really like. There are certain artists that I really like to collect. Um, and I can't remember their names right now. <laughs> like Kagamaru, um, but not the YouTuber. They ha There is a Kagamaru Pokemon artist, which is kind of interesting. But um, anyway, it's spelled like totally different too. Anyway, back to Jesse and James. So when I was drawing this, um, a bunch of people asked me to do the Jesse and James Team Rocket Prepare for Battle motto. And, um, I don't know, it was really fun, and they said I could do it really well. So I'm thinking I'm probably just going to do that for the sake of the live stream and referencing the live stream. So here we go. <laughs> bum bum ba -dum. Prepare for trouble and make it double. To protect the world from devastation. To unite all peoples within our nation. To denounce the evils of truth and love. To extend our reach to the stars above. Jesse, James, Team Rocket, bless off at the speed of light. Surrender now, we'll prepare to fight. Me, oh, that's right. <sighs> okay, I didn't even read a script. That's how sad I am, because I watched Pokemon every day after school when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, I'm probably going to be so embarrassed when I rewatch this and I hear that. <laughs> I'm really hungry. Anyway, um, so for the fire in this drawing, totally unrelated, for the fire in this drawing I outlined it with an orange Copic marker, or Copic multiliner, excuse me, and I really like the way that that multiliner works because it's, um, it doesn't bleed, so it kind of gives a more defined line once you blend it in with the Copic marker. Or, um, once you... Kittens! Once you color with the Copic marker over it, but it's like a more defined line, so it doesn't, um, feather in. So it's... 
I don't know. Like, I really like the way that that works sometimes. I mean, you know me, I really love to blend. Um, but yeah. Oh, someone wanted me to do a tutorial on the metal. Okay, so here we go. So first I color in, like, the light colors and then um, draw lines that are really light. So I do, like, a light line um, kind of in the directions that the light is coming from. And uh, first I go in with all my lights and then I edit it in with some dark colors. And I'd be sure to flick your pen when you're doing this to make it really um, kind of delicate, I suppose. Uh, I guess I moved on to Guard of War for a second there. And then what I did was I went over all of the light areas with a little bit of a darker color, as you see here. Um, the colors I used were C2, C4, and the colorless blender, and then um, some C6. And... Um, I'm editing some lighting just out of frame which is kind of annoying I hate it when I do that um, and now I'm putting in some lighting on the metal of this Agron and I wanted him to be really shiny because in the game he's kind of flat and I thought oh the girl that acts as Pikachu and then the guy that does Mario <laughs> my markers um, so yeah hold on a second let me color the squirtle while I think of what I was going to talk about next I guess um, basically I just, uh, colored metal that way, and sometimes it's nice to kind of go over the darkest lines that you put back in with the mid-tone color. Um, so here I'm doing the dark ones, so per first I put in the shadows when I'm doing dark metal, and since this part's curved, I kind of tried to make it look more curved, so I do the lines in a curve, um, to show the shape of the Agron's tail. And then I go in and blend it all with um, C6 and C4, which are the lighter colors. So I go in here with like a really dark color. I think it's C8. And um, basically, I do that all over him. And since it's a really dark color, I, li I try, to do, um, try to do it really quickly because it dries and then it's really hard to blend that dark color so I try to make sure I do it really fast and um, I don't know why I'm not doing anything right now here we go I had to refill the marker I think and um, as you can see I'm doing it underwater under some water sprays right there and I'm avoiding the outline I drew for the water like I did in my um, fairy drawing and I just do that to make sure that I don't um, cover up the lines of the water because then you can kind of see the show, the flow of the water, because water is not always blue. Um, although I think later I color over it a little bit with like some light BG. Oh, that's B40. No, B21. No, B41. Or B02. I don't know. Oh, lamp. I mean window. I forgot my window was open when I was working on this. So yeah. You can kind of see how time passes when by watching the shadows. Anyway, um, oh, so it, I avoided the color, the s outlines of the splash, and then I went in. I think you saw it. I went in with my lighter gray and shaded the light areas to kind of match what I did with the rest of his body. But I made it much more of a straight shadow, uh, shadow line, shadow line. <laughs> wow, I really can't talk today since I'm like really hungry. Um, because that plate on his body is flat, so I made it a straight kind of shadow line that's a little bit curved. Um, and honestly, I feel bad for Agron, because how can a creature made of metal comfortably move? I don't know. I kind of imagine he's really hot so that his metal body is kind of viscous so that he can move around or something. I don't know. That's just my personal scientific way of explaining him. Um, I guess that's really it for the metal. Uh, now I'm going over Blaziken with R24 and, um, and I almost colored his whole leg red but he has a little bit of a yellow foot there like you see there. And now I'm outside and drawing outside I had my HD camera so the quality just increases by a lot here. Um, as you can see, I'm coloring in his head feathers, and, uh, 
Oh, now I'm doing the skin. I am a really random colorer, if you haven't noticed. And I did color some stuff off frame. Like, I added a lot more to the flames. And, um, Gardevoir's shield <laughs> thing. And this paper is really not very nice for the Copic markers, especially if you like to blend a lot, and I do. And so his hair kind of looks, I don't know, it's a little bit sticky. Um, so I don't really, I don't really recommend this paper. It's aqua bead paper. Um, and I mean, a lot of people really like this paper. I just personally, I like to blend a lot, and this paper doesn't hold up very well to that, so... I'm um, just a heads up, I guess. Um, basically, I think when I was outside, all I did was color the plants and uh, all the green stuff in this picture and like the hair on the characters. Um, and now I'm putting in some shading, uh, which I think didn't really actually make that much sense in terms of the way that that Blaziken was positioned, but whatever. <laughs> um, I tried to put in a lot of shading, or a lot of lighting from the fire, which I think turned out okay. It's definitely not my best piece in terms of lighting, but I really like this piece anyways. Um, what else am I doing? Oh, I added in some purple shadows, and I'm coloring the ground. And I tried to do, okay, so the moves on the Pokemon, if you can guess what they are, um, that's awesome, but if you don't know what they are, I can, oh, that's me showing off my, <laughs> all my stuff, um, if you don't know what they are, um, uh, Agron is using Earthquake, I almost said Earthshake, because I am a total nerd <laughs> when it comes to, um, uh, Land Before Time, um, and then, <laughs> Wow, I'm really off track. Okay, so Psyduck is using Water Gun, and um, Gardevoir is using, like, Protect, or something like that. Um, like a psychic version of Protect. And uh, Blaziken's using Fire Kick. Um, I think that's what it's called. But anyway, um, now I'm starting to color on the shade, on the, on the shade, on the cave. And, uh, oh, that's my Link sculpture that I made. Um, and my cat sculpture uh, that I made for the contest winners. Um, and the Eevee sculpture had broke that day, so I had to make a new one. And I still haven't sent that to the poor second prize winner, and I feel really bad, but it's, t it's, it's $15 to ship her stuff because she lives in, like, Austria. So I have to wait until I can afford that, which will probably be after I move because right now I'm, like, so darned and poor. Oh, that was somebody in the live stream's artwork. Um, I wish I could remember. If you saw your picture and you remember, um, and you can, like, be like, oh, that was my drawing, please let me know so I can give you credit for that. It was like a little baby seal underwater. I'm thinking it might have been Otaku Penguins, but I'm not sure. I Otaku Penguin is just a really common viewer on my live stream. Um, oh, also, this is kind of random, but happy birthday to Zytertri, whose real name is Maria. Um, your birthday, I think you said, was on the 26th, and you wanted a shout out for that, so happy birthday to you. And um, if anybody else wants a happy birthday shout out, I'm always happy to give those out, because what else am I going to talk about in my videos? I mean, I prefer to do commentary in my artwork videos anyways, so, I mean, if you need, if you want to give me something to talk about, you can, you know, um, tell me when your birthday is, and I'll say happy birthday to you, I guess, I don't know, um, it's kind of fun, um, what else am I doing, oh, someone suggested that I draw Zubats in the cave, and I was like, that's a great idea, I'm totally gonna do that, and then I forgot to, so, sorry, <laughs> about that. I wish I had, actually, because that would have made it look really, really cool. Um, I think I did kind of draw the shape of one, but unintentionally, like it was a stalactite or a stalagmite. I think a stalactite is the ceiling kind. 
I'm not sure. Um, yeah, drawing the cave is kind of fun because I love to do cave pictures. If you haven't seen my um, picture of a Pikachu and a Charizard and they're in an ice cave, You'll know what I mean by I love to draw caves, because it's just layer upon layer of dark color, and it's really fun to do. It's kind of like putting together a puzzle or a color by number, which is pretty fun. I don't know. Um, let's see. I'm just putting in shading on the bushes, and I now that I look at it, like, I tried to do perspective with this guy's hand, because he's supposed to be, his fist is supposed to be in, out in front of him. But I think it might be the way this camera is tilted, but it makes his head look way bigger than it's supposed to be. I think it's because the camera's really tilted, but it could just be the fact that I drew him with weird proportions. I don't know. I still do have some areas to work on in terms of people. Um, so, yeah, I am aware of anato uh, anatomical incorrect, <laughs> anatomically incorrect errors in this picture, like Twig Crescent, who is the Team Rocket character, his shoulders, I think, well, I mean, when I looked at myself in the mirror, I looked like that. So, I mean, I don't know, like, it might not be anatomically incorrect. It just looks kind of wonky because I drew one of the sh wrinkles too dark. So this is the final piece, and I really, really like this drawing. I feel like the scanner ate a lot of the dark and light shadows, which kind of makes me sad, but, um, I do really like the fire, and here are some close-ups of each side. Um, which I guess aren't actually that much closer, but that's just how the computer scanned them. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great afternoon, and I will see you guys later.